Boy, am I going to have to write a lot of thank you notes. Um, the, uh, uh, the single best thing, and I'm not kidding about this, is looking at Nancy Perkins, who was my student, and thinking not just of her, but of, you know, a uh, thousand students and mostly in property classes, and uh, uh, they're all doing all sorts of things. Uh, 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 one of them I'm going to introduce Wednesday morning, who's now the Chief Justice of the United States. And if you think you want to know what makes how you know when you're old, it's when you taught property to the Chief Justice of the United States. <laughs> but uh, 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 but that, uh, thank you. Okay, I, that's all I can say is that I think it was a little long, but uh, what can I say? Okay, so so it was great. So so um, 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 let me start this way. Um, um, the the. Uh, um, uh, in September, I had the tremendous honor, not, this is not a joke, of, of, of being invited to speak on behalf of the ALI at the first annual meeting of the European Law Institute. One of whose leaders, Professor Venderhorst, is sitting there. And uh, uh, they said, you know, 15 minutes. And I said, 15, that's not a lot. And they said, well, uh, you can have 20 if five minutes are jokes. And, and uh, so for this time, it was a little different, and Roberta said 30 minutes. I won't use 30 minutes, but Roberta said 30 minutes, uh, uh, but as long as only five minutes are substantive. That's what she said. <laughs> so, so let me do a couple of the stories and then say a little bit of, uh, 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 of substance. Uh, so I went back and you know, took out of my thousand uh, um, uh, experiences and stories just uh, a couple that I want to tell you about. Uh, one is I was in my first year teaching at Harvard property, and, and uh, 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 what I would do is go downstairs from my office, and I had a sports jacket on, I would always have a sports jacket on and tie, and then uh, take off my jacket and put it down on a table, because you want to wave your hands around and write on the blackboard and all that. And then half the time I'd get back up to the office and the jacket would still be downstairs and I'd have to go down and get it again. And I had this brilliant colleague, two years older than I was, three years older, whatever, and, and uh, 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 he explained to me that there was a solution to this, which was to leave the jacket in the office in the first place, since you were going <laughs> to take it off. And then uh, after you could do that for a week or two, then you just leave it at home. And uh, uh, this guy was so smart. And, and he's our dinner speaker tomorrow night, Steve Breyer, OK? <laughs> so I think I knew from then that Steve was going to go far. Um, the second story I want to tell you is uh, uh, we bought a house, Carol and I, uh, with our two little kids in Newton, Massachusetts, and, and as always when you buy your first house, uh, you know, or in your second and your third one, you buy one a little more expensive, you know, you're looking at them and you thought you had a limit of how much you could afford. My salary was $18,000, and, and, uh, 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 and you go a little high and then you're a little squeezed for money at the beginning. Uh, and then we, it turned out we had termite damage. And I tell you, we didn't have any money to fix this termite damage. And somebody said to me, a visiting professor at Harvard from another school said to me, uh, the solution is to do a bar rev review course. You can make money doing that. And that the best place to do it is California. And so I've only done this once in my life, thank goodness. But I, I flew to Los Angeles uh, from Boston on the day, because whatever time was squeezed. I didn't come the day before, so I don't know, plane landed at three or something, and the class was uh, like six to nine or something like that with a break after an hour and a half in the middle, and I'm explaining property law to a packed group of, of, of people going to take the California bar, and I was exhausted and on Eastern time, you know, so it was midnight for me and whatever. I was trying to get through this, and I made it to the break, and at that break, uh, a, a person came up to me, a male, uh, not so young, and uh, uh, at the break, and he was smiling, and, he, and I was really feeling pressure. And he said, oh, Professor Liebman, uh, that was just such a brilliant, and I was starting to feel really, you know, like it was okay, you know? Uh, 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 and and, and I just magnificent, he said. Um, that's the best I've ever heard covenants running with the land explained. And this is my 17th time taking <laughs> That's exactly what he said, OK? So, <laughs> so OK, so that's, that's, my early, that's my early experience. Now we get to, I'll tell you my, my, how I know about the ALI, when I first knew about the ALI. 
um, is that uh, the senior property professor was Professor Kasner, who had taught me, and, and who was not an easy guy, and he did the work in the second restatement for this organization and all of that, uh, and God, was he an ego, and, and wanted to be in charge of everything. And so uh, he demanded that Carol and I come to a dinner uh, of a group that I now realize was simply an advisor meeting uh, for the second restatement of property at the time. I'm not sure I understood exactly what it was, but there were lawyers, judges, and, and, and academics there at the, at the uh, uh, Harvard Club of Boston. And, and we went over there and, and uh, uh, we're sitting there eating. And I was a young Harvard property teacher, so he thought I should come meet these people working on the restatement of property. And, and, uh, um, um, and, and then for the program, for the dinner, um, he said, now let's go around the room and, and uh, everybody uh, uh, tell when they first met me. And, well, <laughs> and, and what I've done for their lives, you know. And, and, and then he starts around the room and he skips the women. And Carol, at that moment, this is the early 70s, you understand what I'm thinking about. Uh, I'm, I'm whispering, no, no, keep quiet. <laughs> I want to get tenure, you know? <laughs> and, uh, uh, and boy, it was a tough moment. Um, then the second thing that happened, a little more interesting in a way, he comes into my, no, he must have summoned me to his office, but anyway, he tells me I'm going to be a member of the ALI. I don't even, I'm not sure I filled out anything or did anything, but he makes me a member of the ALI because he then orders me to come uh, here to Washington because uh, his version of the rule against perpetuities is, is having trouble and being attacked actually by Professor Powell of, of Columbia, who, who I never have know, knew, knew, you know, I knew his son, but, but uh, by the time we got to Columbia, he had passed away. And, and Powell was a leading uh, 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 property law guy like Kasner was, and they didn't get along. And so whatever Kasner was doing, Powell was going to come to the meeting and attack it. And Rod may remember this. And, and uh, uh, the, the, the rule against perpetuities version, the, the reform version that Kasner had worked on, was getting attacked. And they didn't bring it to a vote. I mean, the, the, the management thought, you know, we better not risk this vote. We'll put it off a year. And, and then uh, uh, I came back uh, the next year, and Jim had brought in, he was much better prepared for the next year, and he had brought in some English uh, 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 professor or judge or something with a fancy name, you know, Lord something or Sir something or something like that, uh, who got up and said that Britain had, or England had, had reformed the rule against perpetuities in 1920-something, and the queen was still on the throne, and this had not <laughs> been the death of wills or anything. And the second year, they, they with me in the room voting, of course, for Kasner, <laughs> uh, we, we put it through. Uh, the next thing that happens, I'm a member, and uh, I get a call from a famous professor, Bernard Meltzer, in the University of Chicago. And he wants to nominate for, for membership in the LI his son and daughter-in-law, and, and uh, uh, Dan and Ellen, and some of our closest, maybe our closest friends. And, and uh, uh, would I, I don't know if I nominated or seconded or whatever the, whatever the process was. And the word comes back that, yes, uh, uh, Professor Meltzer, a very young teacher at the time, uh, can be a member, but I think Ellen was working in government, and, and uh, uh, maybe that wasn't quite distinguished enough, you see, to be, a, to be an ALI member. We, we, most of us have thought that until recently nobody was ever turned down for membership, but I got this call and I went on the warpath and I said, hey, you guys are putting out this stuff and saying you want women members? And, and, and here you're going to say that Ellen, with this incredibly distinguished record in law school and, and clerking at the United States Supreme Court and, and, and all these other things, can't be a member of the ALI and her husband can be. And this is, this is pure discrimination, et cetera. And, and uh, it worked. And I don't know who the, if anybody now in the room was involved in that process. Uh, in the 80s, but, but uh, 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 that, that was one of my successes. <laughs> then we get to the point, and, and, and Ron Gilson was uh, briefly on the, on the screen there, 
uh, we, we get to the point where uh, uh, I'm either going to be or not going to be director of the ALI. And uh, uh, I'd finished being dean, and Carol and I were on a sabbatical uh, doing some teaching at Hebrew University in Jerusalem. And, and, uh, um, um, and the Gilsons were there also, Ron and Nina. And, and Ron had been a, a, a reporter on the corporate governance restatement. And he was really working on me, saying, you can't just go back for, to teaching uh, having been a dean. You'll be bored, and you need something to run, and all this. And this is a good job, and the ALI is a great thing. And, and, and that's what you know, made this happen from my side of the story. I don't know what made it happen from the, from the uh, management side. And uh, Bill uh, was on there, Judge Webster, the great Judge Webster, uh, was chairing this thing, and, and I had turned it down a couple times and wasn't sure and whatever. And then we worked it out on the phone with me in Jerusalem, but Bill says, I need you to be uh, in Philadelphia, in, in Washington, on a, probably a Tuesday or a Wednesday. It was just like this meeting, you see. I think the meetings then went to Thursday, so this might have been on Wednesday. Anyway, uh, so I had to make a, the equivalent of a 24-hour, 48-hour round trip from Jerusalem to, to, to Washington and back. And, and uh, we had been away on this sabbatical for, I don't know, six weeks already. We'd been in Italy, whatever. And, and so I flew to New York. And there were piles of mail and stuff like that. We hadn't been there, and Carol was still stayed in Israel, and and uh, uh, it was a quick round trip, and and I was of course jet lagged up the gazoo, so I flew to New York, looked at what was going on there. I think took the train or the plane to Washington, got interviewed by by Bill Webster's committee, and all of you know that Bill was an incredibly successful director of both. Uh, uh, the FBI and the CIA, okay. But he had made clear that it was worth my while to fly and, you know, I wasn't, there weren't still five candidates or something, so this was going to be okay. And uh, I was willing to take the job. And uh, so I have the meeting with the nominating committee and I come back to New York and as I left Washington, Bill said, uh, Lance, uh, uh, I'll let you know how this goes at the committee. He said, but it may be a while before I contact you because uh, I'm going out tonight on the Secretary of the Navy's yacht for dinner. And I thought, you know, you still could have called me. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and I bet they have a phone on that yacht, you know? But anyway, I, I go back to New York then and, and, and I'm sitting in front, I fall asleep, of course, jet lagged uh, on a couch with the Yankees game on TV. And uh, eventually, like 10 o'clock, the phone rings, and Bill says, yes, the, you're going to be the director, whatever it is. And I said, thank you, sir. And uh, uh, he then says, um, he's got to say one more thing. It, it's too early to you know, discuss the salary. That's Bennett's business, whatever. He says, uh, uh, um, um, to say one more thing. He says, uh, Lance, everybody at the agency thinks you're going to do a great job. <laughs> And I said, I, I said, Bill, Bill, what is this? What is this job? He said, I mean the institute. I mean the institute. <laughs> so that was that was the start of my 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 whole thing. Okay, and 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 that's enough uh, 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 stories that Nancy's heard before. Um, but but uh, uh, so let me just say this. Um, um, one thing is that that, and I really mean this in a very serious way. Taking this job from, from Jeff Hazard was a great experience, and Jeff was an extraordinary person, and he, he when I looked into the numbers about five years ago, uh, Jeff had been the shortest serving director at 15 years, and so I thought, 15 years, okay, that's a goal, and I put that in my head as May of 2014, and those years have come, and whatever. And Jeff was hugely helpful to me during my time as director designate. He taught me everything and, and remained very active, but without you know, trying to make trouble for his successor, which sometimes happens in institutions. And uh, so that's been simply my goal with, with Ricky in these terrific months as we've spent time together. And he's asked terrific questions, and I've usually not known the answer, but but trying to be helpful to him the way uh, uh, Jeff was, was to me. 
uh, I've had four presidents in truth. Uh, one is Rod who, Perkins, who, who was president emeritus when I started, but has been extremely helpful. Uh, Professor Wright, who died at the end of my, my first year as, as director, so that was not a substantial uh, uh, working together. Wonderful, wonderful years with Mike Trainer, just wonderful, and uh, including the, the problem of the three-hour time difference to California, and I would try to stay up to answer his emails before going to bed, but of course, you know, he had a three-hour advantage on me, and so some of them I didn't see till the morning. And, and then Roberta's only a two hour time difference, so that's a little bit, a little bit better. Uh, of, of the four, uh, Roberta's the best because she's the only one I can kiss, you see. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but but all, all of them a, a good experience. And I'll just repeat, things were said about Bennett before, but Bennett Bosky, a, a joy to work with and so knowledgeable and so committed to the ALI. And I don't think Roberta said the number, um, his age at this moment is, I think, 97 and three quarters, and, and uh, that, that's amazing, and his brain is working, and, and he cares about this, this institute. Uh, uh, um, and, and I want to mention, although they're not here, uh, Elena Capella and Mike Greenwald, whom I inherited as, as deputy directors and with whom we worked closely for a, a decade. Uh, and then this became the job of Stephanie, and, and uh, uh, that's been a great, great, great experience. And I'll just mention, I mean, all 70 of our employees are, are important and, and easy to work with and, and helpful to somebody who doesn't, isn't in Philadelphia where they are, but needs things from time to time. Uh, I'll just say the first names, Marianne, Beth, Judy, and Deanne. Uh, but I'm saying those names as symbols of, of dozens of people with, with whom I've had uh, a, great, a great work experience. Now, uh, for my five minutes of substance, um, the, the, uh, 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 w when I was coming in, Jeff Hazard said to me and said, I think here in his, when he gave his talk at his last meeting, uh, said something I, at the beginning I, I really doubted. He said, this is the best job for a, for a law professor that there is. He said that, and I thought, I don't know, you know, I was a dean, that's a good job, and there are other jobs, etc. cetera. And, and now from this perspective, I know that Jeff was right. And, and first of all, we've got, this organization has an ability to influence the law. Very few people have that. Very few professors struggling to write a law review article have any realistic hope that that article is going to change the law of the rule against perpetuities or, or anything else. But if the ALI will recommend it, it may. And, and uh, it's not easy in a legislature or even in Congress to, to get the law changed in certain ways. The ALI has 91 years of, of actually influencing, influencing law. So if we can do good work and convincing work and balanced work and persuasive work, um, we can influence the law. So what does the director do? The director has to m basically make the decisions of which projects to take up. And some of the ones I've started or that have started in my time uh, were mistakes and haven't, didn't work out, and, and others have. And, and especially now, you know, our, our founders thought there was a fixed thing called the common law and so the subjects, agency, restitution, uh, whatever, property, contract, torts, uh, were somehow there in the heavens to be, to be uh, uh, identified and then you complete the work. Uh, we don't think that now. We think we've got, I don't know, 100 or 200 possible areas of law and we gotta pick and choose where we can do something and that's a truly challenging intellectual, political decision where the director is the, the, main, the main closest thing to a, a leading decision maker, even though you get huge amounts of advice and others in the process and all that. Then you've got to find a reporter or multiple reporters who can do the thing, and, and, and uh, uh, that requires persuasion, and, and, but again, you're, you're, you know, it's very significant job and, and uh, uh, worth working very hard on. 
Then, then you've got our process, which uh, 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 brings the, the different people into a room and tries to get from here to there with, with something that, that works. And, and uh, uh, you know, we got 14 projects. I'd say three are in areas of law that I know something about. So you're up in front and trying to protect the reporters from evil uh, advisors in the room and, and, uh, 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 and trying to keep that, that going. And then the main thing when you're up there in front of one of these things that you don't know much about is trying to stay awake. And, and, uh, uh, and, and, and you see, about, I, I heard it said about both Herb Wexler and separately people told me this about Jeff as I was coming into the job. They said this, the great thing about Professor Wexler and others said the thing about Professor Hazard is they can be fast asleep, each one they said it about, he can be fast asleep up there and then wake up and ask a brilliant question. And I said, well, I've got the first half of that figured out. <laughs> but, but, but uh, or the other way to put it with so many different subjects of law, and I've said this to Ricky a few times, is the job is for somebody who's either eclectic or superficial. And I think I'm both of those things. And I think Ricky is only eclectic. He's, he's not superficial. OK. But, but that, that's the point, and it is a, a, uh, an extraordinary institution, and, and depending on the membership, depending on the council, uh, depending on finding the, the reporters, depending on persuading people to be advisors, uh, people to come to members' consultative groups and make their comments, and if we can keep engaging all these people, uh, we can absolutely make a contribution to law in this country and to some degrees with certain work we'll do uh, in other countries as well. And, and it's been a wonderful experience for me. Thank you. Thank you.